towards the end of one of the exercises in chapter 8, you'll basically just be duplicating and you know, scaling and rotating a uh, single image over and over again repeatedly. So um, I didn't really write all of that out. Um, but it's basically here, these little ants um, that you'll see in the palm of the hand here. I'll, I'll sort of hide some of these and just leave myself with one. So once you have one, it's pretty easy to go ahead and just create a, a few others. Um, and I just have the move tool enabled. I could do this from the move tool or if the select tool, one of the selection tools were active, that would be okay too. Um, but I'll go ahead and just have move tool active. And I'm on one of the ant layers. So I'll just hold the option key and then I can click and drag. Nothing is selected. Um, that's the only surprise that you could have. If something were selected and you did that, you might get something that you didn't expect to see. Um, and then I'll press Command T. Remember that you, at this point, probably don't really want to scale up or enlarge your, your image uh, too much because then you'd be adding pixels to the file, but you can always scale down. So you can, you can decrease the size if you want to. And if I put my cursor just outside one of the four corners, I can then click and drag to the left or right to rotate. Um, and so this would be a kind of quick way to go ahead and do this. Now um, you can see a, an, an error that I almost made there. If, if you drag, this center point is actually the, the anchor around which the um, layer, in this case the image uh, on this layer, will rotate. And so sometimes you accidentally might move that and, and your image doesn't move uh, because it's actually not um, indicative of your image. So just be careful of that. You can click anywhere else within the bounding box and move the image. And once you're you know, more or less happy with how it looks, you can go ahead and press return on the keypad or enter. Um, and then if you want to make another one, hold the option key, click and drag. Uh, again, command T for free transform. You know, rotate if you want to, scale if you want to, return, and I could you know move that around a little bit. Um, so um, this is a kind of just a repetitive action. A lot of times, this kind of redundancy will will help you to you know put the key commands into your mind. Um, the last thing that I did after I made my copies was I also added um, a little bit of a burn on the hand um, to. Um, darken the tonality there right underneath the ants. So you can see I have hand with shadows and just and just regular hand. And, and you can see, so, th so it, you know, I can see where my ants that are hiding right now actually were located. Um, so if I wanted to, I would go to that hand with shadows layer. I won't save this, but um, I could then access here my burn tool. And I could set this to midtones because the hand is kind of the midtones, um, and I wouldn't um, I wouldn't work with too high of an exposure. So I would maybe start, you know, someplace around here, or so. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller with the open bracket on my keypad, and I'll just click and drag a little bit. This isn't a huge change; it's a really minor kind of edit, um, and it's just sort of. Um, indicating the idea that you know a light if there's a light on that's helping me to see this ant from the top let's say somewhere from the top of the image I should probably locate exactly where that light source is then it, a shadow um, would fall underneath the ant so and I, I'm not even too picky right now about where the light source is in particular I'm just sort of showing that if you put a little bit of a burn underneath the ant kind of makes it seem like the ant is a little more grounded or connected to that hand image. So um, so that is how I completed um, that portion of the exercise and um, if you needed a little extra help or guidance there um, using some of those key commands, remember it's the option key with the move tool to make a copy, it's command T on a Mac or control T for free transform, and then always hold the shift key as you're transforming to constrain proportions.